Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to understand one of the most important topic from the major phase, which is also creating many confusions in the working professionals or the people who are going to learn this major phase of the Lean Six Sigma. The topic is types of data and measurement scales. I am going to explain these types of data and measurement scale with the help of simplest example so that you can have the 100% clarity on these topics. So let's begin to learn this important topic. Let's start with the why first. Why we need to understand the types of data and the different types of measurement scale. It is very important to avoid analysis errors. It is important to understand the type of measurement scales used for the data collection so that we can have the accurate analysis of the data. So what is the need to learn this important topic is to have the correct analysis of the data. When we have the correct analysis of the data, then whatever the countermeasures that we are going to define that will be accurate and which in turn gives us the desired results. Once we understand why we need to learn this important topic, let me explain you that there are mainly two types of data. The first one is quantitative data and the second one is qualitative data. I am going to explain each of these data type along with what is the measurement scale associated with it with the help of practical example. So let's first start with the quantitative data. As the name indicates, quantitative data means the data that can be measured with numbers like number of orders, temperature, etc. Now, when we go into the detail of this quantitative data, the quantitative data has two important types. The first one is discrete data and the second one is continuous data. Now let's go into the detail to understand what is meant by discrete and continuous data. Discrete data, as the name indicates, are the whole numbers that can't be broken down such as the number of items purchased. The number of items purchased always as a whole number like 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. When we talk about the continuous data, continuous data are the numbers that can be broken down into fractions such as time and weight. Now, if you are going to understand the continuous data, there are two important scales which are associated with continuous data and these are interval scale and ratio scale. Now let's see in detail what is the interval scale and ratio scale. How we can identify the data is with the interval scale? In the interval scale, numbers are with the known differences between the variables such as time and temperature. That means we can understand that 12.2 degrees Celsius and 12.3 degrees Celsius. So there is a difference of 0.1 degree Celsius. So there is a interval is present. The second scale is a ratio scale. As the name indicates, in this ratio scale, numbers that have measurable intervals where the differences can be determined such as height and weight. So if you know the height and weight, we can also calculate the difference between two entities. So this is the first part. We had seen the quantitative data. There are two types of quantitative data, discrete data and continuous data. And with the continuous data, we are having two important scales, two important measurement scale associated with it, which are interval scale and ratio scale. Now let's go into the detail for qualitative data. As the name indicates, qualitative data are the non-numerical data that is categorical such as yes or no, the color of the eyes, etc. Now if you go into the detail for qualitative data, there are two types of scales that are associated with this qualitative data, which are nominal scale and ordinal scale. Let's understand these scales in detail. Now when we are talking about the nominal scale, in nominal scale, data is classified in categories with no order implies, such as hair color. And when we talk about the ordinal scale, in ordinal scale, the data used to describe the order of values, such as 1 is equal to happy, 2 is equal to neutral, and 3 is equal to unhappy. So we can see there is some order which is exist in the ordinal scale. These concepts are the core part of the major phase. If you are having 100% clarity on these concepts, that is going to help you during the data collection and accurate analysis of the data. Now let's understand these measurement scale with some more examples. As we had seen the qualitative data, let's continue with the same measurement scale associated with the qualitative data. The first scale is a nominal scale. As we had seen, there is no numeric meaning and no particular order exists for this measurement scales. And the examples are like color-coded wires, 
there can be the different colors of wires like red, yellow, blue. That means when we are going to describe these categories, we can see there is a group of red wires, there is a group of blue wires and there is a group of yellow wires. The another example is color of eyes. We can also take an example like your marital status, whether you are married or unmarried, that is again the nominal scale. The second measurement scale for the qualitative data is ordinal scale. As we had seen, there is a rank order, but the differences are not determined for the ordinal measurement scale. The examples are like hotness of the chilies. We can see hot, hotter and hottest. There can be another example like we can indicate the number one to indicate the happy person, number two to indicate the neutral person and the number three to indicate the unhappy person. So there is some order that is exist in the data. Now let's come back to the measurement scale that is associated with quantitative data. The first measurement scale that we had seen for the quantitative data was the interval scale. And as we had already seen, it is used for a numerical variable with non-equal intervals of the same distances. Examples are like temperature in degree Fahrenheit, IQ score or customer satisfaction scores. The second measurement scale that we had seen for the quantitative data was the ratio scale. As we had seen in ratio scale that has a measurable interval and true zero exists in this case. Let's take an example to understand what is true zero. If you are going to weight a particular part, what we are doing? We are making the zero first and then we are putting that part onto the weighing machine. After that, we are measuring what is the weight of that particular part. So there is a true zero which is exist in case of the ratio scale. Another example can be height of the person. So in this case also, we are starting from the zero and we are checking what is the height of that particular person. I am sure with extra examples, there might be the 100% clarity about these concepts in your mind. Now let's understand some of the important characteristics for these measurement scales. Now if you are talking about these scales like nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio, let's compare these scales with respect to whether there is a true zero exist, whether there is equal intervals, whether there is an order in the data or we can just categorize them as per their similarities. If we take the nominal scale, in case of nominal scale, we can only categorize the data into different categories. For example, marital status. We can say either the person is married or unmarried. If you go into the detail for ordinal scale, we can also categorize the data like nominal scale. But in addition to that, we can also have the order in the data. For example, team rankings. If you go into the detail for interval scale, as I already explained to you, there is a specific interval which is present into these measurement scales. So this scale is having the equal intervals. There is an order which is present into the data and we can also categorize this data into different categories. And the last measurement scale is a ratio scale. There is an order which is present in our data. There is a presence of equal intervals in the data and also there is the existence of true zero, which I have already explained with the help of example, like height and weight. With these examples and explanations, we have completed the learning for this topic, but I have a one exercise for you. This is an exercise for you. After the end of this video, I am requesting you to please complete this exercise by putting a timer of 10 minutes. So what is this exercise? Let's say you are the management team of a manufacturing plant of tennis ball. And here is a list of activities that you need to do. First, create a list of the different data type that you have to monitor to assure the quality of the product. Two, specify if the data is continuous or attribute. And three, specify the measurement scale for each data. Whatever the exercise that you have conducted, please put that exercise into the comment box. I will be more than happy to read that comments and reply to all your comments. At the end of this video, if you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, if you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel. By joining this YouTube channel, you are not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career growth. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.